coming up. Something like 93 or 94 percent of all cattle registered the American Angus Association today will have a pedigree that at some point touches um, ideal. Whether it was a bull owned by Martin or Greg or Cody or was bull bred by one of those three. Pick better females, we can help pick better bulls. And what does that lead to? Hear the story of a South Dakota family's success with beef cattle performance breeding next on The American Rancher. and welcome to the American Rancher. In the 1950s, beef cattle performance breeding was revolutionary. A pioneer in that concept was Dr. Jay Lush at Iowa State University. Martin Jorgensen Jr. at Jorgensen Land and Cattle was one of the first cattlemen in America to embrace Dr. Lush's concepts. And today, the Angus herd at Jorgensen's is unmatched for performance beef cattle genetics. The Jorgensons are based in ideal South Dakota, where the family has created a thriving enterprise of farming, hunting, and raising top Angus genetics. Jorgensen family uh, has been in the Northern Trip County area uh, since 1909. Uh, my great-grandfather, Martin Sr., and his wife, Gertrude, homesteaded here 1909, they, they had a family uh, and lived on that homestead for right at 30 years. Back then it was the homestead era. They, had, they did everything they could just to kind of scratch out a living. They had turkeys, they had cattle, they did all these things. In the late 30s is when they moved to our, our current site. It's about two and a half, three miles away. My grandfather, Martin, uh, was effectively running the operation uh, at that point. Getting into the you know to the, the 1940s and 50s, the, the farming operation grew a little bit. Um, they started raising commercial cattle as well, and then um, in the late 1950s, early 1960s is when Martin started breeding registered Angus cattle. We made the decision to really focus on Angus because of their mothering ability, um, the trouble-free cow. He and his brother Don, uh, they were in business together through the 1970s. Around then, 1970s, 1980s, my uncle Greg, who would have been the third generation, came back from college, came back to the operation, um, followed about 10 years later by my dad, who also came back from college, started to run the farming side of the operation. Cody came back from school uh, in the late 1990s to run the livestock side of the operation, and I graduated from South Dakota State in 2014 came back and so currently the the ownership structure are, are is Brian and Greg who are third generation and then Nick and Cody who are fourth generation. When our family looks at an acre of land uh, we like to look at it on on three different fronts. First and foremost we like to you know if, if we're able to farm that acre of land uh, we want to farm it uh, with with soil health in mind we're trying to get our soils back to their most native state no-till practices, things like that. At some point in time, the second thing on that same acre is we would like to put a hoof on it. We'd like to be able to graze it sometime throughout the course of the year. And the third thing then would be to, to do some sort of egg retainment on it. And in our part of the world, we're blessed to have wild pheasants around. We have a lodge and it handles uh, 40 hunters at one time, two groups of 20. And uh, we get people from all over the nation to come and enjoy this beautiful land and um, hunt the, the Chinese ringneck pheasant. Part of what we offer, um, it's a, it's a three-day hunt, it's a four-night stay, and it's all-inclusive. All your meals, um, all your bird cleaning, uh, everything that uh, you would need while you're here uh, pretty much is provided. So you go to our website, jorgensenfarms.com, and, and uh, it'll navigate you to the Lazy J Grand Lodge. And, um, and you can get your information there or you can just call our headquarters, 1-800-548-2855. And, uh, and you can talk to Carissa in our office today and, and she'll get you lined up. And so looking at those three things, there's a lot of operations that can certainly do one or two of those things really well, but there really isn't an operation that can do all three that I know about. All three of those things along with adding value to all the things that we do um, with respect to cattle and, and 
grain farming. After the break, we have just as much and in almost every case more information on these commercial bulls than a lot of purebred seed stock producers will have. Take the guesswork out of matching top Angus genetics to your herd when the American Rancher continues. Stay with us. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Over the course of six decades, the Jorgensen family from Ideal, South Dakota, developed Angus Performance Genetics into the benchmark of the industry. Whether you need bulls, females, or both, the Jorgensen's excel in matching their customers' herds with the precision of genomics. Back then, my understanding of the industry was, you know, you picked your genetics based on the show ring. You know, animals that won won ribbons and won banners at, at cattle shows were the were the bulls that you used. And so grandpa was was doing that and he found very quickly he wasn't getting the actual performance on the ranch that he wanted. Right? He thought he could do better. So what Martin did and what Martin was extremely good at throughout his career was surrounding himself with people that could help him achieve his goals, right? And they set about breeding better cattle than they could buy. And what he started to find in pretty short order was that he, that he and his team could in fact breed better cattle than they could buy. I'd call Grandpa one of the pioneers in performance testing cattle. He was, some of the, he was one of the first guys to really take individual weights and compare them to their contemporaries. Before, before that, we didn't really have anything to go by. Well then, well then what he was able to do is take those weights and put them on cow cards so we could actually tie those performance weights back to the mama cow. And I really think that's, that was the beginning of being able to, to really study you know, cattle. And uh, once, once we got there, then it, it, we were able to study other traits based on our con contemporaries. You know, that worked very well for him. Over the course of the 60s and 70s and 80s, uh, the, the Jorgensen operation had quite a few very, very popular bulls and very well-known cows. My father, Greg, is extremely performance um, oriented, right? Um, really, really looked into the numbers. At that time, EBVs were just coming, coming to the forefront, uh, which later led to EPDs. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a, lot of, a lot of catalogs, if you look back in our history, that just literally had the numbers uh, outlined in the book. There was no pedigree, no, you know, pictures or anything like that. Uh, and so that was my dad. He, he just was so driven by the numbers. Uh, he led the ship uh, from early 80s until the late 90s, and that's when I took over. And um, uh, from there, I, I, I really went back and reviewed, uh, you know, how Grandpa did it with his, with his tools and then how my dad did it, you know, with what tools he had. And I didn't want to, um, because both philosophies were right, I didn't want to give up either, either one or any bit of what they did or what they built. And so what I tried to do is take new technology, plus what they did, and really try to mold it together and balance all of the things out that, that, I, that I could to the best of my ability. I really feel that's where we are today. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a dial on a radio. We're really just fine tuning, right? Um, uh, but not only that, then we also have DNA to help us along the way. So ultimately, we have just as much, and in almost every case, more information on these commercial bulls than a lot of purebred seed stock producers will have. And the other thing that we like to stand behind with that genetic evaluation is we have full control of that evaluation about how and when the data gets submitted. And what that offers us the ability to do is make sure that it's right, right? We have, we have complete control over the quality of the data going into that evaluation. Where you look at other breed associations, they don't have that ability for oversight, right? And so you get bad actors, unfortunately you do. You get bad actors that submit bad data and what that inherently does is decreases the integrity of those predictions coming out of those evaluations. What we can stand behind is we have full faith and trust in those predictions that come out that, that they're as accurate as they could possibly be because we control that data. Um, you know, we work with Zoetis, they do a phenomenal job. And so once again, we, we, these bulls do not carry registration number, but they are everything but registered. You know, it used to be kind of uh, 
hey, you should buy this bull because I said you should buy this bull. You should buy this bull because my dad thinks it's great in this way, or my grandfather thought this was great. Uh, when I came along and tried to use that tactic as a salesmanship, uh, it, it didn't work as well because, you know, I'm a younger guy and so on and so forth. But what did work is the fact that we have forensic DNA, that, that no one can tamper with that, right? You should use this because the DNA match up or line up. And, and uh, our customers really are grabbing onto that and really, really respect that, that strategy. The other powerful thing we can do with genomics is we can test cows too. And so we come to our customers and say, well, why don't you test your, genomically test your females? We can get all the same information that we would have on these bulls and we can make decisions like a seed stock producer would make where we know the genetics of the cow, truly know the genetics of the cow, and, and not just maybe who the sire and dam were. We truly know the genetics of the available bulls we have, and we can really narrow down to our customers and say, all right, where do you want to take this herd? You have the flexibility to take it whatever direction you want to take it, and we will help you go that direction with this information. And it's powerful stuff. What we found is, you know, when you make sound genomic decisions, you can improve the dollar value of those animals easily by $100 a head, just based on improved performance, improved carcass traits, you know, things like that, uh, in a very short order. This is not something that takes a long time. We can make these steps, uh, you know, in the course of a generation or two. So, you know, that's that's a big focus on our operation. And, you know, that's, we've, we've kind of stood up a, a portion inside of our business we call Ideal Beef Genetics, where what we do is we work with our customers on the genomic side, right? So we can help you select females out of your herd, right? So you test your heifers, we'll help you determine which ones of those you wanna have for the next seven to eight years. Because a lot of times making that decision only on the phenotypes you have available to you, which might be what? Maybe a scale, a scale weight, maybe a weaning weight. You might know a little bit about her pedigree, but largely you're making that decision in, in the alleyway on how she looks that day, right? We can still do that, but we can also inform that decision with genomics and say, hey, yeah, you know, this heifer might look pretty good, but her genomics are terrible. Are you sure you want to deal with that and inject those into your herd for the next seven years? And so we can help pick better females, we can help pick better bulls, and what does that lead to? I, I think if you look at the American Ag Association today, it's something like 93 or 94% of all cattle registered that, through that association will have a pedigree that at some point touches um, ideal. Whether it was a bull owned by Martin or Greg or Cody or it was a bull bred by one of those three. So big influence in the Angus breed. That is what supports our bull marketing program is that well-known solid reputation in the breed. Up next. This year we're, we leased over 4,600 bulls. People are realizing how much easier life is when you don't have to own a bull. See the benefits of leasing bulls backed by Jorgensen's genomic data. That story's after the break, here on The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Jorgensen Land and Cattle develops Angus bulls and females with superior performance genetics. Ranked by Beef Magazine as the number one seller of Angus bulls in America, they perfected a bull leasing program that's trusted by hundreds of producers. Those bulls come from the power of Jorgensen's mother load cow herd. The mother load is renowned for its high quality breeding stock, which has led the Jorgensen's to be the most sought after supplier of Angus females and bulls. If we focus on the very best females, which is what Martin Jorgensen did in the 50s, and also my dad through the 80s and 90s, they really focused on, on balancing females that, that worked hard and were predictable, and they were able to travel, all of these things that caused problems out in the industry, we worked on them from a genomic standpoint. We think if we get the, the female piece right, that, that the bulls are, are what I would consider to be a byproduct. If you get the female piece correct, the bulls will naturally be good, okay? It wouldn't matter what you breed those females to, they'd still create a good calf. And I think most commercial men look at it like that. And um, that's, how we're, that's how we're going forward with our cow herd. That's really what the mother load breeding philosophy is. If you're a mama cow uh, here on our herd, you're one of three status. 
you could be an elite, what I call an elite cow, which is a cow that we're pulling embryos from. You have proven yourself, um, you're able to um, do some things from a genomic standpoint that a lot of the other cows are unable to do. Right now when we have around 50 elite cows that we're pulling embryos from, we have a very, very extensive embryo transfer program. In 2024, we, we intend on putting over 2,000 embryos in. Okay, so you're an elite or you're a varsity cow. Now a varsity cow is a cow that is above average. She's doing her job uh, from, from all fronts. Pretty good chance that she's coming from a, either an elite cow or she's coming from another varsity cow that's above average. So every heifer that we put back into our herd comes from one or the other. We're, we're using replacement heifers from cows only above average in our herd, okay? The third status would be a recip. About half the cow herd today is in the recip program. And so if there's something there that, that would be some, what I would consider some sort of a blemish that, that I don't want to go forward with from a genomic standpoint, we'll just put an embryo in you and um, we'll go from there. That doesn't make her a bad cow, it really doesn't. We have uh, 15 um, what I call genetic partners or cooperator herds. They will come into our cow herd, our parent stock cow herd that we operate here in Ideal, and they will select the best bulls um, out of that cow herd as possible. We will then go back and buy their calves at weaning time and grow them and test them just like we do our own bull calves from our parent stock cow herd. That's how we put together so many bulls. Um, our genetic partners are, are in this business with us together. That's why I call them a genetic partner. You know, they're, they're doing all they can to make their cattle better from a genomic standpoint. So we, we get these bulls in at weaning time. We grow them just like we do on our own. And the leasing part of our business is probably what makes us the most unique. And it's also what gives us the biggest amount of volume. This year, we're, we leased over 4,600 bulls across the country and that's that's a very quickly growing product for us and I, I think we're finding that happening because people are realizing how much easier life is when you don't have to own a bull and we can offer that service where that bull's on your ranch for 90 days 120 days however long you want it and then he's gone uh, it's very appealing to people historically leasing bulls has gotten has gotten a bad rap i think that historic lease programs were bulls that were just put together there was really no genetic consistency behind them. Our product is different. There is a genetic backbone behind all of the cattle, whether we sell them, lease them, and that to me is what is the most important. I like to grow these bulls with a, with a uh, ration that, that isn't too high in energy. I like to say, I like to slow cook these bulls, so to speak. We've known over the years because we've tested so many, the higher the ration you feed these bulls at a younger age, the worse it is for them. Yes, I understand we're trying to get as much gain out of them as possible. I'd rather make sure that that bull uh, has maintains himself for a, a long, a long period of time for our customers. Right? This is all for the greater good of the animal. So when we get them in, we'll we'll feed them no more than a than a 44 megacal ration, and uh, we'll slow cook them through the first 200 days on test. Right? Or 160, whatever whatever it might be. Okay, well then these bulls are gonna go out on a lease for their, for their first time. They're gonna go out in a 350 mile radius of us here in Ideal. We get along great with yearling bulls. A lot of people love having yearling bulls out. They, they do a great job. We get those cattle back in sometime in August, September. We have to keep them here again for almost a full another year, right? Till they go out again in the spring. So after they're done testing, the coming two-year-old bulls, then they, they just kind of need to, to grow and live. So these are the bulls then that we, we put out on a cover crop or we graze. So they, they really don't need to be in a feedlot scenario, right? Um, they just need to grow and exercise and, and we'll, we'll bring these cattle back into the yard sometime in March and get them prepared for their delivery date sometime in May, June. So they'll go out again for their second time and, um, and breed cows. That probably is our, is our most sought after product, is a, is a two year old bull for lease. A lot of people love two year olds. Um, all right, so when that bull goes out his second time, he'll come back into us again the same time frame, uh, September, October, and we will get that bull then in, into condition for his direct sale, which is a smart bull in the southern market.
okay, all of the states around the Gulf of Mexico, Texas, all the way into Florida. And this product really works well for, for the guys down there because they've, they've went through the hard part of their life, they fully have gotten their teeth, right? And they've got enough room and expansion to eat the grass that's really quite wet in most cases down there. Even if you're in a high desert country where there's not a lot of grass, the bulls that, that were sore footed or whatever, we've kind of executed them out of the system. Um, these bulls really do hold up. In fact, we continually have to find new customers because the bulls are lasting longer, which, which is a good thing. If you think about it, there's three different parties involved in the sale of the bull at the end of the day. And, when it, and every time we lease an animal, it works for that person. And when we sell them in the southern market, they're priced competitively and it works for that person. So whenever you have a two-way or three-way sale like that, it works for everybody. That to me is good business. Join the Jorgensen family for the 2024 Top Cut Bull Sale, Monday, April 15th at the farm in Ideal, South Dakota. The sale features 150 plus registered Angus bulls backed by seven generations of performance selection and powered by the mother load. Go online at jorgensenfarms.com or call the number on your screen for a catalog. We hope you enjoyed this fascinating story about Jorgensen land and cattle. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook or YouTube. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.